Okay, this is a demonstration of iAnnotate PDF, uh, a iPad app available for $9.99 through the App Store and from branchfire.com, which is particularly useful for faculty in both research and teaching. When you open up the app, uh, you come to a library page, which has, uh, or to a recently opened document, uh, that has documents uh, that you, you have opened. Um, you can also in the library page have organized, so I have organized mine so that I have um, my file according to projects I've worked on. And you can see that I've like marked up this document uh, using a couple of different techniques. Um, which I will demonstrate. Uh, I have also found it particularly useful uh, for um, grading student papers. The easiest way to import a document into iAnnotate PDF uh, is through Safari and to go into Blackboard and to go into the needs grading area and to open an assignment. And here's a doc assignment. And then you can open it in iAnnotate PDF, which puts it in your library. And here I have, alphabetically, I have brief instructions for iAnnotate PDF 13 as a doc file. And I can open it. And then I can start marking it up. Now, in marking it up, in, in making comments to students, you have a couple of, of basic ways to do it. One is to use, well, I've got to save it as a PDF copy so I can work on it. Uh, one is to do sort of a comment box, very similar to um, how it's done in, in, in Word. So you open the box and you write your comment. Now, when you send this, how this will appear to the student is actually sort of a number in the margin uh, on the side, and then the comments will be listed sort of like endnotes uh, at the bottom. Or you can type directly onto the student's page. Uh, and this particular way of, of giving comments to students has a particular use, use, usability or usefulness because uh, if you're making similar comments over and over again in the same assignment, um, use academic journal articles, very common comment. Um, you know, on assignment, you will be repeating comments, and you can turn that into a stamp. So once you have it, you, you can select on it, you have the option up here to create that into a stamp. Um, then you give it a label, I'll call it journals. And then later in your grading, you can uh, once again uh, find your stamp tool, and you have a, a multitude, multitude of tools available for you and take your stamp tool and put a stamp in and which one will I want to use the journal one but I could choose any number of them uh, I could use the one that says okay well I need you to use more details this stamp I particularly like using this one three times details 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 um, but I could also go back and remind them that, you know, as I said, the, okay, here the student didn't use enough journal articles, and so I use my journal stamp. Boom, use academic journals. Um, there are, uh, I also, one that I've made before, very useful stamp, is a paragraph break stamp. Now, 
To make a stamp like this, so you're not typing, what you do is you go back to your tools and uh, you go to a writing tool and and I find it very useful to zoom in real far so that I can easily draw the diagram or draw the image I want like a paragraph break one I draw it I'm done I can then t you know I shrink it down that's what it's gonna look like sort of normal size I can tap on it and create a stamp for it so and then I can later if I need to use that particular stamp, I can use that stamp. I can call it up. Um, I can also, if that's one I'm going to use a lot, I can call it up and let's see. You can add it to the toolbar. Let's explore adding it to the toolbar you open the toolbar and you add and I can add a yeah, this is uh, annotation I'm adding in oh that's an annotation tool. Okay. Um, all right, I want to in a toolbar edit the toolbar and I want to add uh, a stamp with a specific image, and so I can Oh, I just drag this over to the toolbar and Then I have to specify which image Let's try that again. Um, so I can add to a toolbar, edit the toolbar, add with a specific image, bring it over here. Then it asks me to identify the image. I want my my journal one, journalist issue one, and then I create it. And now I have that as a stamp on a toolbar. And you can modify and, and create these. You can even sort of you're doing a lot of grading on the same paper, create a toolbar that has all the various sort of repeated comments um, as a single toolbar for an assignment. There are also stock stamps that I sometimes use, uh, arrows, check marks, uh, letter grades, frowny faces, you know, uh, And what not. Um, again, in for sort of specific comments to the student, you can actually really have no limit of how much you put into a text box, uh, and you can have a lot of uh, feedback to the student that's very specific. Now, once you have finished grading the, the paper, you want to return it, of course, to the student. Now, returning it through Blackboard is clunky. Uh, you're going to have to get the document onto your uh, computer, and your desktop or your laptop, and then upload it. What I ask students to do is to put their email address um, on the top of the document underneath their name. If they don't do that when I'm going through the gradebook, of course, I have their end number and I can send them uh, something to their end number at unf.edu and this gets it to them directly and then I enter the grade of the gradebook uh, and email it directly to the student uh, and then they get the feedback. Now, to do that, we're finished with the document. We go here. I go to my PDF form of this. And let's 
So I go to it and I select it and I have my choices over here and I decide that I want to share it. And in sharing it, you have three options. Um, going from right to left, one, you can actually share the original unmarked PDF. Um, this actually can be useful if you're marking up articles you're reading and you want to share it with someone and you don't want to share your markups, you can do it this way. Um, if you're wanting to have someone else look at a paper, look at something, and not see your comments, then you can send them the original from here. Now, um, on the left, we have an annotated, and this is sort of um, with pop-ups and pop-up windows for the comments, and this really sort of depends on the functionality of the students uh, PDF reader, the flat, and they can edit the comments. If it flattens, then uh, things are not editable, and the comments then show up as numbers, no, number notations, which the student then you know will sort of read as a set of endnotes at the bottom. So I prefer using uh, the flattened, and then um, my email client pops up and I can enter an email address. This is why I like having the students put the email address at the top of the document. This allows me to uh, email it back to them without having to really look up a lot of information. Uh, and then I can email it. Now, let's see what it looks like on the other end. On the other end, the student can get it and open it, and it is marked up like this. And this is not an IANTO PDF, this is just in the standard, but I have my the markups that I have put into it, and the student can, can see them. Um, for me, there's several advantages in this one. Uh, students can't read my handwriting, so this gives me a way to uh, give detailed, meaningful feedback. And even though the oftentimes it is repetitive feedback to the same student, I don't have to write it over and over again. Uh, and it's all, uh, or repetitive feedback to different students, same comment, different students, I can, um, you know, sort of, save time um, of having to sort of rewrite the same concerns over and over. But uh, it also allows me to not have to carry a huge stack of papers, just have to have internet access. Um, or I, you can sort of download them all ahead of time. If you're not gonna have internet access, have them on your iPad uh, and then, then grade them. Um, and I find this uh, an extremely useful tool so that I'm not carrying a stack of papers, I just have the, P uh, the iPad with me.